honor science program. But you know, I still kept on reading politics and active being active in politics. It took away from my study time even, you know. So I wasn't able to do as well as I wanted to. And I finally decided that uh, really what I needed to do was, you know, study political science and not physics, you know, because you know, studying science, pure science, you know, was, you know, my a pleasure for myself and an interest, you know, an intellectual pursuit, you know, that of great interest for myself. However, I have to subordinate that, you know, to what uh, my uh, my role in society would be, you know, in terms of, you know, my knowledge and my context. So I switched over to study political science, did a qualifying year in my fourth year after taking my general degree, and went into do my master's at York University in political science. Then I was invited to teach at Atkinson College at York University. I was a professor in um, Political Economy of Canada and Introduction to Political Theory. And then uh, the war of, uh, then there was the war of 1982, the first Israel invasion of Lebanon. And I knew the uh, Palestinian ambassador to Canada, Abdullah Abdullah, who is now the par parliamentary uh, whip for the Fatah party in the Israeli, in, in the Palestinian part, in Palestinian Legislative National Council, which is the Palestinian parliament. So he invited me to come and work as his assistant in the Palestinian embassy in Sorry. Ottawa because he realized that in order to address a North American audience, you had to have somebody who knew how to write in, in English, in North American English. Mm -hmm. And they had nobody who could write in North American English. You know, and they were just establishing their diplomatic corps, you know, because Fatah was becoming like uh, setting up, you know, an apparatus of a state. And they were delving into finding ways of setting up diplomatic contacts with various countries. This was the predecessor, you know, to the Oslo Conference and diplomatic agreement that occurred at that time. But it took like, you know, 10, 20 years, you know, of preparation to arrive, you know, at the Oslo Accords. And I was part of that process. So I left Toronto, left my job teaching at York University, and I gave up on Toronto in general, you know, like, because, you know, family was over for me. Um, and uh, and Toronto was 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 very harsh circumstances, you know, to to sort of exist, you know, in the Jewish community. So I went and I worked in Ottawa as a writing assistant, you know, to Abdullah Abdullah. And so uh, every day I would write letters, you know, to the editor. This is where our means of diplomatic intervention, because in Toronto I used to write letters, you know, to Toronto Star, you know even when I was young, and, and they would get printed, you know, because I wrote in a way that was both Jewish and uh, pro-Palestinian. So I was able to overcome mm -hmm. this divide, you mm -hmm. know, because of my own history. And so, I, uh, I, because I was successful in doing so, I was invited to do the same thing, you know, for the Palestine Embassy in Ottawa, which was an office in the Arab League offices there. And it was only called the Palestine Information Office because it didn't have the status of an embassy because Canada didn't recognize, you know, the Palestinians as a diplomatic entity yet. So uh, we were a subordinate office to the Arab League, you know, which was a recognized diplomatic office with a security guard at the front door, the whole bit, you know. So uh, I wrote all these letters and they were sent in by various, under various names, the name of the ambassador, the name of his children, the name of his wife, you know, the name of, you know, somebody else. Oh, the uh, light is flashing. Does that mean that there's a, it's coming to the end of the... Uh... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, one, it's one minute. Okay, good. One minute one left. Minute. Oh, yeah. okay. So, uh, there's much more, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, I, that's why I wrote my documentary study on the Sabar Shatila massacre of the Palestinian refugees, which is this book here that I, I've republished, you know, this year. But this was initially published okay. in 1984. And uh, it took me three months of work to do this and uh, retyped five times on a mechanical typewriter at the time. And uh, this really sort of confirmed, you know, that I, the work that I was doing politically was an absolute necessity, you know, because the situation was degenerating into, uh, you know, uh, genocidal practices, you know, which were conducted uh, in that instance, you know, by the uh, Falangist Lebanese militia in alliance, you know, with the uh, Israel military occupation which was led by General Sharon at the time. And uh, that was uh, 
a planned uh, massacre that was conducted because the um, phalangist um, Maronite Christian uh, Prime Minister of Lebanon had been assassinated two weeks before and so this was an act of retaliation for that assassination uh, against the Palestinians even though... If you give me two minutes, I can put another tape. This way you won't have to rush. Okay. Ah, okay. okay. So uh, okay. let's take a break yes. and we'll continue. <laughs>